Well, the Block Arcade is one of the jewels in Melbourne's retail crown, and it's having a notable birthday. It's 120 years since it fully opened for business, with grand entrances on both Collins and Elizabeth Streets. And while shopping fads have come and gone, the Block has retained its very particular sense of style and service. Andrew Bell went shopping. The term the block, it, there's no need to change it, no need to try to modernise it. The Block Arcade, a cathedral of retail born out of calamity. On Friday the 13th of September 1889, fire swept through George and George's Federation store. Three firemen lost their lives. What grew out of the ruins was something rather special. Architects were briefed to recreate Milan's Galleria Vittorio, the world's oldest shopping mall. But what to call it? Doing the block was a term referring to the Society of Melbourne who would walk in Collins Street from Swanston to Elizabeth, then down to Little Collins and back up to Swanston. It was called Doing the Block and they would do that on a Saturday. When this building was being redeveloped after the fire, the owners then decided to pick up on the term the block. And the, the doing the block actually changed slightly that they would walk from Swanston to the block, through it, and then out into Little Collins and back to Swanston. This is the Collins Street facade. I can always pick it out in old photographs by you can see the light in the front there. Eileen Irvine gives guided tours of the block, downstairs and upstairs. Now this is interesting. If you look up here to the left, you've got three lovely stained glass windows. Those windows are quite a feature and something of a historical mystery. Now we did a lot of research and we came up with Ferguson and Urey. Now they closed their North Melbourne warehouse in 1894 and we opened 1892-1893 so we feel these may have been the last windows that they did and they were responsible for a lot of the church windows. That's a remarkable link Street. with 19th century Melbourne. Absolutely, but there's a bigger link that we're trying to prove, Andrew, and that is that they may indeed have come out from England and they may indeed be Whitefriars. And outside as well as inside, there are some hidden delights, hidden from public view anyhow. It does look different when you're above it doesn't it? It's, it's fascinating. I imagine it's the only place in Melbourne that has something like this, where you actually walk across. Here's another walkway here. Meanwhile, down below, an ever-present does what it's always done. A Hopeton tea room is an original. It was called after Lady Hopeton, the wife of the then governor. There are a lot of favourites, but I guess some of the most popular would have to be oh, the pavlova, the strawberry sponge, the New York cheesecake, lime tart, apple strudel, I can keep going. <laughs> and as well as sweetness for the tooth, the block has always offered sweetness for the eye. So this is 1892. As you can see, it's the full garn and it's absolutely beautiful lace, just so fine. And Christopher Horn is corralling a collection very, very of historic couture lace, to very, celebrate very the block's anniversary person. in a fashion so show. It was um, literally a time of going to look at millinery, going to you know, try it on. Obviously the people that were in the store were all personalities, all beautiful personalities, and knew exactly what went with what, and people loved that. Meanwhile, back on Eileen's tour... So this is as the old arcades used to be. The scales are still down there. You used to put a penny in them to get your weight. It's neighbor totally to recognisable as the block, isn't it? Absolutely. Nothing's changed. And that, perhaps, is the block's secret over the years. This was where you came to shop for those important purchases. If you wanted a, new, a really good pair of shoes or um, a hat to go to the races or a wedding. The milliners in this building were outstanding. The jewellers in this building were also outstanding. But 
the, the block was a highlight at that time and still is. The building may be timeless, but its clientele has changed. It is a tourist attraction and in these times uh, we are seeing the benefit of that. The traffic here through the arcade is vibrant with the tourists who are coming to our city. Put simply, Melbourne without the block is unthinkable. People still love it. You, you see grandmothers go in there with their daughters and their grandchildren um, and they just look around. It's just this, um, I think uh, it, it, you just aspire to a, a, a lovely look, to a lovely style. Great place to shop. Andrew Bell enjoying him way too, <laughs> enjoying himself way too much at the Block Arcade. And we'll have pictures of those historic gowns from the Block's 120th anniversary fashion show in just a moment. Before that, a reminder that if you want to make a suggestion for a story, you can go to 7.30 Victoria's website at abc.net.au slash 7.30 slash Vic. And you can follow me on Twitter. Now back to the Block Arcade for our final flourish. We'll see you next week.